The sun rose over northern Victoria at 7.14am on February 7, 2009. The stillness masking the uneasy calm at the start of what would become one of the worst days in Australia's history. As the light of the new day fell on the trees of the Northern United Forestry Group's Kamaruka Plantation, the overnight stillness of the sapwood was disturbed as the trees awakened. At dawn, the atmosphere contained much less water than the moist interior of the inner leaves. The young eucalypts, driven by osmosis and photosynthesis, began their familiar routine. Exposed to the light, they pumped potassium to the cells surrounding each of the tiny water valves, or stomata, in their leaves, causing them to swell and open, allowing carbon dioxide to enter and moisture to escape into the atmosphere. Water lost to the air was replaced by water pulled up the stem and roots and out of the soil below via thousands of tiny tubes in the soft sapwood of the tree just underneath the bark. We all woke up <clears throat> on Black Saturday morning um, expecting uh, a horrific day from the uh, forecasts that had been available to us. So the first thing I did when um, um, I got up was basically wonder what was happening to the trees at Kamaruka. Um, and because I have this remote set up where I can read them, um, I started having a look. Um, so by about nine o'clock in the morning, the, um, the temperature was already starting to hit around 30 degrees Celsius. Um, and the, the other thing that was happening was the relative humidity was falling through the floor at the same time. Soon after sunrise, about 20 minutes after sunrise, um, there was enough light um, around for the trees to begin to photosynthesize. Um, and, and that's what they did, so, you know, they've, they've woken up effectively. The North Central CMA and the Northern United Forestry Group work closely monitoring the trees, with the group using sap flow meters to measure the upward flow of water through the tree's stem. Supplied by and installed with the help of Australian company ICT International, the sap flow meters work when one of three tiny probes about five centimetres long injects a pulse of heat into the tree every 30 minutes. The probes either side sense that heat transfer as water moves up the tree, beaming the information back to a server. The atmosphere gets drier and drier and it starts to get hotter and hotter. Um, the demand by the atmosphere for water from the tree, from the leaves, um, gets higher and higher. If the atmosphere becomes too dry and heat becomes too high, is that the plant's expected to, well, the plant's forced to basically provide as much water as it can to that dry atmosphere. If those conditions become too severe, then the tree isn't capable of delivering the water at that rate. So it, it ends up um, in a situation of stress. And that's what we were facing fairly early on in the day with uh, Black Saturday. By about 10 o'clock in the morning, things were getting pretty bad. Um, from a tree's perspective, it was looking pretty horrible, basically because the atmosphere was demanding a lot of water, but the trees uh, weren't necessarily capable of providing, and things were getting hotter and hotter, basically. So, in the face of all of that, if that situation had continued, then we would have seen um, the trees wilt or collapse or suffer some sort of, sort of stress. But these trees didn't do that. Um, instead, they did something remarkable um, that they've learned how to do over the last 20 million years, of, uh, through 20 million years of evolution. Shortly after 10 o'clock, under this amazing amount of stress that we saw on that day, um, the trees um, miraculously shut down their transpiration, that is the amount of water that they were using, by 
and they stayed there for the rest of the day. So this substance called abscisic acid, and abscisic is kind of a Greek word for cutting or something like that, actually releases some of that potassium from around the, the edge of the, uh, the guard cells, which allows the water valve, if you like, to shrink and, and reduce the water. So I'm sitting at home watching the trees through my remote access setup, watching the sap flow, the velocity of the water moving up the tree, um, and within 15 minutes I noticed we've gone from a situation where they're running at full tilt to a point where they had reduced everything by 50%. Within 15 minutes, it was that quick. Uh, the reason that we got into this uh, high-tech monitoring of the trees was largely because uh, we wanted to get a better understanding of what, these, what was going on. And that allowed us to do exactly what I've been talking about. It allowed us to see the trees wake up in the morning, to see them respond to the sunlight, to see them pump through the day, and then three or four o'clock in the afternoon as the sun's starting to head <clears throat> Back towards the horizon, we, we see the trees reducing their, their water use and uh, you get to a little after sunset and you see them shut up shop and go to sleep for the, for the night. They're organisms that are uh, dynamic is the only word that I can use for it. So what do I mean by that? They, they react in the moment. They're not something that's reacting over a day or a week or whatever. If a cloud comes over here and blocks out the sun, the trees immediately respond. You start to think of them very differently as though they're, they really are um, living, breathing organisms that have some level of programmed in intelligence about them. And um, yeah, that's, that was a life changer for me. You know, these programmed responses are there now because of 20 million years of, of adaptation. The trees all tell a story. Um, and uh, it's exciting basically to listen to that.